In this problem, we have this uh, pendulum, so a uh, playground ride, um, for which we have to determine the length um, that yields a maximum um, angular acceleration of five radians per second squared when no one's sitting on it. Uh, so we have a rod of length L that weighs 0 0.6 kilograms, no matter which length. And um, at the bottom of it, there's a disc um, of radius 0 0.3 meters with a uh, mass of one kilogram um, attached at the end of it. And we have to analyze um, the instant uh, of which angle theta is 45 degrees. So um, we have to determine this length that leads to this maximum angular acceleration. So we know that a longer length leads to larger angular accelerations. Um, so um, our length will be the maximal length. Okay. Um, so let's start with um, the free body diagram. So we know, I'm going to draw it onto this image here and then I'm going to draw it separately. Um, so we know there's a force um, of gravity, uh, due to gravity, at both the center of the rod and the center of uh, the disc at the bottom. So this is going to be uh, Fg and then we have F capital G here. Um, so this is the disc and this here is uh, the rod. Okay, um, and then um, we're going to have reaction forces at A. But um, the most important thing is drawing in alpha, which is already drawn in this diagram, as the angular acceleration. Um, so we have x in that direction, y is positive in that direction, and rotation is positive counterclockwise. Um, let's draw a separate free body diagram, because when we draw a free body diagram, we want to detach um, the uh, system. Uh, so let me draw it in. And that's going to be at the bottom there. It's not exactly a disc, but that'll do. Uh, so let me draw in the forces. Um, so we have here at point A, we have reaction forces in X, um, so in Y and in X, we have AX. Uh, and then we have um, the two gravitational forces, so uh, FG and FG. And these act at the centers of gravity of the rod and the disk. And then we have our coordinate system, which is x positive this way, y positive this way, with a positive rotation. And lastly, we're going to have our um, alpha angular acceleration. Okay. So um, now we can we have our free body diagram, so we can do a sum of forces and moments. But um, and then, oh, I forgot to mention this angle here is uh, 45 degrees. So this angle here is 45 degrees. So back to the sum of forces and moments. If we take a sum of force in the x direction and y direction, all we're going to solve for is these um, components, ax and ay, the reaction components. Um, and we don't really need to solve for that. We're not asked for the reaction. We're only asked for the length of this uh, rod. Um, which doesn't depend on the reaction. So we don't really need the sum of forces in x and y. Um, what we need is the sum of moments, because the sum of moments relates this alpha to um, the geometrical properties of length, uh, L, and through these forces that create a moment. And so it's important that we take a sum of moments about A so that we cancel out these two forces that are unknown. And all we have is these known forces um, that are and their moment is going to depend on this length L here. So that's why how we relate L to alpha. Uh, so let's do that. So we take a sum of moments about point A and we're going to equate it to I alpha. So let's um, I'm going to solve for I A later. I'm just going to leave it. Um, but essentially we have I A. So this is um, I about A, which is different than about the center of gravity, um, and then we multiply by alpha, um, 
and since there's no movement at alpha, then we're going to have this equal to the sum of moments. And there's two forces that create moments, F lowercase g and F capital uh, G. Um, so um, there's going to be two components to this. So we have the first component from F uh, small g, which is negative L over 2, because um, the radius, uh, this moment arm here, is L over 2. Uh, and since this acts in the negative y direction, we're interested in this radius here along x. Um, so this is going to be times uh, sine of 45. Sine of theta, sorry. Leave everything in terms of var variables. Um, and then we multiply this by the force, which is uh, uh, the mass of the um, rod, which is m of the rod, which is 0 0.6 kilograms, always, no matter what length, times g. And it's going to be negative because it makes everything rotate clockwise. Okay? Next, we're going to move on to F capital G, which is negative L uh, sine theta uh, times uh, the mass of the disk uh, times g. Okay, and again, this is negative because it makes everything rotate clockwise. Okay, uh, so now um, this equation relates um, alpha with L, but we still have this unknown term which is uh, IA. Everything else is known. Okay, so we, s we need to solve for I about A. So since we have multiple components, we're going to look at each component separately. So first we're just going to take I about A of this rod here, and then we're going to take I about A of this disk back here. Um, so um, IA is going to be equal to, so for the rod, remember it's just one half ML squared, uh, ML squared, sorry, um, so one third, sorry, one third uh, ML squared. This is simply for a rod, about the end of a rod, okay? Uh, then we're going to add uh, the disk. And so the disk, we have two components to uh, uh, I, which is, first of all, um, the inertia about um, this point over here on the disk, the center of the disk, rotating in this direction, plus... Um, parallel axis to bring it back to A because it's at a radius A um, from that point. Uh, so we're going to have uh, plus uh, one quarter uh, m r squared, which is essentially for the disk, and then plus m d squared, which is parallel axis where this d is going to become L. Okay, so if I plug in L, um, and the values, I get the following, that IA is going to be equal to one-third times, times 0 0.6 um, kilograms L squared uh, plus one-fourth times uh, one kilogram times 0 0.3 meters squared um, plus one kilogram times L squared. And so this is, now we have IA just in terms of L. We could plug it back in, and we have an equation relating alpha and L. Uh, and with everything else being known, so we can directly solve for, um, give, given an alpha, which we are, we can directly solve for L. So let me reroute the equation um, in full and add in all of the um, numbers. So we have one third times 0 0.6 kilograms L squared plus one fourth times one kilogram times 0 0.3 meters squared plus one kilogram L squared. This is equal to negative L over two sine of 45 degrees. Um, the m of the rod is going to be 0 0.6 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, and I'm going to go on a new line here. 
uh, minus L sine of 45 degrees um, times the mass of the disk, which are given is one kilogram uh, times gravity 9.81 meters per second squared. And so now we can solve this equation because, um, and sorry, I forgot to multiply by alpha over here. So that's I alpha equals to um, this sum of the moments. And everything is in terms of L. And since we're given an alpha of um, 5 radians per second squared, that's the maximal alpha. We're going to plug in alpha and solve for L. And as you can see, this is a quadratic equation. So this is the resulting quadratic equation that we get. So we plug in alpha is equal to 5 radians per second squared. And we get the following. Uh, negative 6L squared minus 0 0.1125 plus 9.0177 L equals to zero. And when we solve this, we get that L is equal to either 0 0.0126 meters or um, L is equal to 1.49 meters. Okay, and between these two answers, the question asks to pick the most reasonable one, which is 1.49 meters, because this would be a very, very small ride. Okay, so this is our final answer. L is equal to 1.49 meters.